if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet. I was spotting down the firing range for several shooters when all of a sudden I saw a large hairy creature walking from right to left. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Encounter Brigade, welcome to the team. Hey, hey, Johnny, how are you doing? Captain Joe, what's going on, bud? Good, good, man. Just uh, enjoying uh, a great day, a little bit of sunshine here. Looks like the uh, United States Air Force shot down a Chinese weather balloon or off the coast of South Carolina, so that's good. Yeah, man. Uh, I was a little, you know, the first I heard it was uh, Montana, and then they wait till South Carolina to shoot it down. That's not real. Yeah, they, I'm, I, they didn't use a hypersonic missile, did they? No, they uh, <laughs> more, more probably is, uh you know, rubber band and spit wad, but, uh, but, but yeah, so that's drop, dropped a ranger with a chisel. Yeah. I mean, out of the back of an airplane. Yeah. I mean, that's on the news right now. So pretty, pretty interesting. Um, but you know what? Uh, so here within the last 15 minutes, I got, um, the audio recordings from our guests that you'll be introducing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of eerie just because, uh, um, to me because they are from mississippi my wife's from mississippi and we'll we'll get into that with our guests you know so go ahead and give us some quick background all right uh <clears throat> i was actually contacted uh by another group member i don't know uh i'll let i'll let paula say her name i don't know whether she wants to have her name known or whatever anyway uh the other lady's part of our group and uh she's friends with miss paula and she recorded this crazy vocal, like it's a super good vocal. And now she's not a, I don't guess you would specify as a researcher. She's kind of been interested in the topic because of her friend. So I guess she does kind of pay attention to stuff, but she's a photographer mm -hmm. out of Mississippi. She owns uh, several acres. Um, the way she's described the area, and I'll let her describe that herself. Uh, it sounds like, you know, prime habitat. But she basically just, you know, recorded this uh, vocal on her phone. Wow. And sent it to, uh, of course, I'm always honest with everybody. I am not a audio expert. Uh, so she looked around. I looked around and she wound up uh, finding a guy named David Ellis. And David went through and cleaned up the audio, uh, took a few of the different. There's several different yells in it. Um, it's like a seven minute audio and about half of it there's vocalizations and they're really good vocalizations mm. but uh if you want to just uh is paula backstage she is so i'm gonna go ahead and add her on now looks like yeah, she's bring her ready, on. ready to go smiling and happy okay, yeah. all right hello hey, hey hello miss paula. paula so paula <laughs> yeah so paula uh tell us uh quickly and you know, a little bit about yourself uh where, where you live uh, I live in a town called Goshen Springs, Mississippi. Uh, this has been my mom's homestead for about 43 years. Unfortunately, she passed away and I moved back up here from Florida. And uh, so I've been here about five years. And uh, it's a little town that almost doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but there are a lot of springs still in existence. And I also have springs on my property. So it's just a little town, tiny. Okay. So, um, just, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm a graduate from Ole Miss. My, yeah, so is my, my daughter. <laughs> okay. My, yeah. my wife, my wife's from a little town that, uh, was about to go extinct, extinct until they started filming hometown there. So she's from Laurel, Mississippi. Oh yeah. I love Laurel. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you're probably the, um, only other person I ever heard say that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love it. I like <laughs> shortcut through there on my trips back to Florida. Oh, okay. So, so Goshen Springs in relations is, is where? Coastal, central, no, northern? Right? Yeah, it's closer to central Mississippi. Um, it is north. Uh, we have interstate system here that runs uh, uh, north and south, which is I-20. And then, yep. I'm sorry, I-20 goes east and west. 
I-55 goes north and south. I may be completely wrong on that. But I live north of the interstate uh, intersections uh, and to the west of, of Jackson, basically. Um, it's We have a large reservoir here um, that was uh, land that was uh, overtaken to build the reservoir back in the 60s. Uh, and I live right on the reservoir here. Okay. And the reservoir was it? Uh, Ross Barnett. Ross Barnett. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm familiar yeah. with it because uh, um, uh, a lot of bass master cl um, fishing yeah. tournaments up in that area. My so. dad was a bass pro. Oh man, so <laughs> so was my so was my father-in-law from Laurel, but uh, no, no. So I'm familiar. Okay, Ross Barnett. I totally, yeah. I, I kind of got that. Okay, um, so not quite in Jackson, Mississippi. Still, still a ways out. And, yeah, you know. So we definitely know. Uh, um, you know, uh, starting to get a little bit more rural. Obviously. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And this this area, just in, just in the five years that I've been back, has really uh, grown just in the area that I am in. Okay. Uh, but when we moved here, we were mm -hmm. the first people in the area, um, wow. and we, it was a dirt road, and we were the only people that lived on it. And uh, so I've watched it grow uh, through the years, for sure. Okay. Okay. So before, <clears throat> before Joe goes and plays it, what... <clears throat> What made you start recording? What uh, did you have an interest in this topic beforehand? What was your kind of your background dealing with all this stuff? Well, um, I my best friend who uh, her name, I don't know if I should say her last name, but her name is Kimberly. Okay. Uh, she lives in Florida. That's where she and I met. And she is a huge uh, Bigfoot person. And so, of course, because she's my best friend, you know, you do what your best friends want to do, right? Yeah. So um, she um, actually invited me. She has a little house in North Georgia uh, that her family owns that they go visit quite often. And she and I went to a Bigfoot convention uh, in Mountain City, Georgia. And um, it was really informative. And I, I really enjoyed going with her. And ironically... Uh, shortly after I drove from here to there uh, to go to the convention, uh, I was doing a, a Milky Way shoot one night, which was about 11 p.m. And uh, I actually heard a vocalization at that time here in Mississippi also, not at this location, but in a, a location that was a little bit more rural than where I am. And uh, I thought I had recorded that, and I was very disappointed that it, uh, obviously, my friend who had her phone didn't hit record, so we did not get a recording. We've had uh, that happen before. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Professionals. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually went to the uh, mapping project, and I logged that on there. That happened in 2018, um, so it's been a few years. And, but, you know, when you live out in an area where there's not a lot of other noises and you just hear a lot of wildlife, something that stood out to me that particular morning, um, I was out on my front porch where I am now and it sounded so very close and it's, I, it's just a, it, it was a, it's a vibration. You feel it in your whole being. Uh, and it's, it's, it's like, it's hollow, but at the same time, it's so big. It's, it's bigger than anything else that I could identify myself. It wasn't a coyote. It wasn't a fox. It wasn't some bird. It wasn't, you know, I, they say we have black bear here. I've, you know, in all my years, I've never seen one. I don't doubt that they're here in the area because we are close to a river and the reservoir, mm -hmm. but, um, it just, it struck me. And so I had heard it two or three days prior to getting the actual recording. But by the time I got my phone and got it on record, I was a nervous wreck. And, uh, and of course, it quit by the time I made all the motions to get my phone to record it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, like I said, it was a couple days before. And I had heard it in the distance in the days in between. But it wasn't as close. Well, the day that I heard it, when it was so close, I knew right where my phone was. And I was Johnny on the spot. No pun intended, Johnny. But <laughs> I went and grabbed my phone. And I mean, I, I, you can hear all of the craziness of me. 
I have a broken window and I, you know, of course I'm trying to wrestle with the window and a stick and all the, Oh no, did I? No, you're still there. Am I still there? Okay, yeah. You turn your camera off. Let me get back yep. to you then. Right. I'm so sorry. There you go. Uh, okay. I had something pop up and I tried to get it off. Uh, anyway, so wrestling with the window and the, and the stick to hold the window up and then deciding, okay, let's just get back outside and running out. You can hear the door. So in the beginning of it, it was quite messy because you could hear all of that going on. Yep. But I was determined I was going to record this thing. And, uh, and I have, of course, heard it uh, twice again since. Um, and I, one of the times I did also record it and it was funny because Johnny had posted it Yeah. and I was on the front porch listening to it and I had a Bluetooth speaker and that's when I heard it the second time and I started recording it again. Uh, so I do have that recorded. I haven't sent that to anyone to have it cleaned up, but it is in the distance. But it's clearly the she, same. She sent it's, it to me. It's clear, like she's clearly the same call. Yes, so, it's clearly so, the same call. But it so, was so Paula, a little bit southwest of me uh, okay. from where that one was. So Paula, if you mind me asking, like, um, was this here recently? Last year? Couple no, years this ago? was last week. Uh, last two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, super recent. Okay, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you and your friend went to that. Um, Bigfoot convention that was in 2018 there. okay did yeah. they um did they uh have any uh like audio recordings that 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 they played there that all of a sudden you you kind of got familiar with, to what to listen for yes when, they did okay. they were, I, I i haven't had tv since 1998 so i don't know the name of the television oh. show but i can tell you that some of the speakers that were at that forum uh, were women that were, and I, I, I hope I don't mutilate it, but I think they were called the sea squatchers or the sea uh, yeah, the she squatchers, she squatches, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't recall, and I apologize if I slaughtered that, but they were, uh, now that's funny because our, our very own Angie, our, our, our very own there Angie. Yeah, our very own then, Angie is a friend is friends with some of the she squatchers. So. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I would love to hang out with them. So, I think they're on the Pacific uh, so uh, I, East Coast or West Coast. So so I I'm I, I am kind of following you because you know you know, so I you know, I I hunt out in the in the West uh um quite a bit, elk hunting, right? So there's no right. elk there's no elk in, in you know, in Georgia or Mississippi, whatnot. So, no, you know what? So once you go out to like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, wherever, to for elk, yeah, for elk. Once yeah. you hear, once you hear one like that, you know, the beginning of the season out there, your 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 ears kind of get calibrated. I say, right? You you right. And, and, you know to all right. Now I know what I'm listening for. Right. You know? It's not a deer snort. It's yeah. Not, you know all the so, things. So now I think like you obviously are picking these things up and, and you all it's like you know what you're listening for now yeah you know? and it's a feeling too like i said it's a vibe yeah. it's a vibration or something i don't know it was it just feels there's not very many good. animals out there who can do that no 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 and and definitely not sounding like the audio clips that you uh sent to us wow go, go ahead and, go ahead and play it for him joe okay. play him the uh long so, crank right. it up all right so <laughs> paula Paul, you sent um one it was like the uh the fifth scream yell and two distance that's the longer one so i'll play this one first before okay. we do that that cleaned up version okay because... sure all right here we go can you go any louder i'm not hearing anything on my end Oh, it's it's maxed out. Oh no! It's it's good. Play through it again, Joe. It's it's still playing. All right, so Paula, that's most likely like right, the, how the sound is, like straight through your phone or whatever you use to record it with, and then. 
the really eerie one now this is the one like you uh uh, you said it was the first house short sl and um like it's cleaned up and it's kind of isolated but man this this is the this is kind of like i don't know this is the eerie one that i would if i was having to take out the trash and roll the trippy <laughs> right. and i heard this i'd, I'd, I'd probably wait till morning there right. you go So that's what you're hearing. Could you hear that? Oh, yeah. I, could, I couldn't okay. hear anything either time, but I know what you're playing if you're playing those okay. things because yeah. I know what they yeah. You probably have to be wearing uh, headphones. Yeah. I heard yeah. it good. Let's, yeah. Joe, can you play play the – we were talking the first time you played okay. it. Yep. Yeah. Play, the, play the longer one again, and we won't talk at all. Just let it play through. Okay. Wow. That's so, nuts. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Paula. um the, <laughs> Scary. <laughs> you you could hear the howl. Um, yeah. And there's some dogs barking. Yeah. So, it could sounds like hear? they're 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 a little bit. Oh, yeah. We can hear away. good on our end with headphones. Could you, could you, yeah. you hear that crazy? There's, okay, after that. Okay. Because he, I say he, she, uh, they, I truly believe there were more. At first, I thought there was just more than one, and I was thinking maybe two. But the more I listen, the more I think there are more than two. Um, but there's one, after the very first howl that I recorded, there's uh, another one that follows that is more like just a crazy scream. It's like a death scream. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's the one that's that, the that one part that... is what we need to get isolated because that is right. impressive. So yes. it's crazy. I agree. So I agree. The, those dogs that are barking, obviously, uh, are they yours or no, someone else's? Because uh, it sounds like they're further away, but it's they but are. You, so when it sounds like when the howl happens and then um, uh, the dogs are, are cutting up, right? And then, then you kind of get that, like, that scream howl, kind of yeah. like kind of like i don't know if it's like an anger thing or like, like, like be, qu be like, quiet dogs <laughs> right yeah. well and i have two theories that i feel like and i if i if you don't mind me sharing oh, please do. Um, okay with the dogs barking i i feel like they were to my northeast the the first one and then it was moving away because it became lesser of a vibration so i felt like it was moving to the northeast and then uh, on the actual uh, video that I recorded, it was around the four and four and point two eight minute that was in there. There was another one closer and louder that was to my southwest. And I think what was going on in my mind, because they just clear cut 975 acres mm. that has not been touched in the 42, 43 years of owning this property has been nothing but one very huge stand of trees. Yeah. And now outside of my property and the property across that 975 acres, uh, you know, they're still wooded. I'm still wooded. And there's a hunt club that's uh, just a little bit to my west. They're still wooded. Uh, but that 975 acres that got clear cut, I feel like 
if they're transversing through here and they see what's been destroyed that they may have used to uh, visit, I feel like those yells were uh, were like a sadness. I don't know. Not necessarily anger, because the one that I heard in 2018, that one was anger. Huh. These, these, I don't think, were anger. These were hurt or maybe just communicating in some way of saying, hey, where are you? You know, wow. I know that's crazy, but those are my two theories. Either they were communicating with one another saying, where are you? And we got to get out of here because these dogs are nuts or just sadness that the their their land was, this yeah. was you know, their property. Great. No, that's yeah, crazy. Those are, those are some of the best vocals. And I know um, yeah. <laughs> there's another one. Uh, that's crazy. They, yeah, David Ellis did a good job on breaking a lot of them down. There's one that's my favorite. I have to go back and find it. But, but me and Paul are going to sit down and go through and try to figure out what is what and what. And even uh, people that are watching this, any audio engineers that yeah. uh, would like to get involved, because I told Paul straight from the get-go, I am not an audio engineer. I can do a little bit on the computer with our stuff, but we really need a professional because like that second David Ellis has done a great job, but there's a few th key things in there. Like the second one that you brought up, right. which is wild, that scream, that response, there's a call and then there's like a yell. And then that scream is just like primal. Yeah. It's and crazy. it is, uh, and let me, if it's I may, really good. Let me, if I may, also, I want to mention uh, Chris Spencer because he was the initial person that I contacted and he did some of the engineering uh, as well. And then he is the one that involved David Ellis. So both oh. of those guys were the ones that worked on cleaning it up and oh, okay. getting it to the pristine level that it is right now. Oh, and of yeah. course, they provided all of the graphs. And I think I sent you some of those as well. Yeah, you, you, and, sent, a bunch, you sent a bunch of the graphs and everything. From the beginning, from what you started with, Yeah. which there's actually, it sounds like a Blackhawk that starts flying in like a couple, I like a minute it. into it. Yeah, they completely there. removed all that. Yeah. So well, they did a really good job. And one of them, I can still faintly hear it. But when that, uh, on my original, you know, I told you, I said, there's like a military helicopter. And every single time I hear that military helicopter, I feel like, okay, let me listen for Bigfoot. <laughs> maybe maybe they're chasing them, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Trying to find out where they are. <laughs> uh, no, th th thank, thank you guys for doing that for Paul. I mean, that's just, uh, Thank you. that's incredible. Yeah. I, 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 that, that, yeah, that kind of gives me chills, you know, and then it's, it's definitely not one of those things where you would expect to hear, <laughs> you know, in, in, in Mississippi. Right. I mean, you, right. You know, I mean, you're expecting, you know, the Pacific Northwest, you know, can <laughs> Canada or the uh, colder uh, regions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, shoot. And, but as, as Johnny and I know, these things could be anywhere. You know, well, you, you know, you, they you, have them in Ocala. Oh, yeah, yeah they have you, them in Ocala, Florida. Florida. Yeah, you you so, mentioned you mentioned there's a hunting club nearby. You know, and so the yeah. the, the area know, there's actually a part of near the end there that sounds a lot like the uh, the uh, war cry that I recorded years ago. Really? I'm like near the end, it makes that it goes. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Like that. And that's, it sounds that's, awfully familiar. Like it's very, very similar to could that. Could you hear the whooping uh, or whooping or whatever they call it? And yeah, that those, whoop, whoop. <clears throat> yeah, because um, I actually with my ear with my ear when I was recording it. And probably because I was so excited at the same time, I actually text my friend Kim at 3.30 in the morning. It was 3.33. And I sent her a text message and said, wake up. <laughs> I wanted to hit, let, I'm glad it, I'm glad it went out the way it did because I wanted to have her hear it live, but because she didn't answer or didn't call me back. That was, you know, the, a good thing because I was able to get it recorded, but I was wanting her to hear it. And uh, you talking about taking the trash out, there's not a day that I've not taken my trash out since I got that recording. 
because I leave my house about 5.15 every morning and it's still nice and dark. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. and, uh, so I have my head on a swivel <laughs> for sure. Man. So, well, Paula, ha has like any of your neighbors or any of the members of the hunt club, have they, have they like in passing say, hey, did you hear anything the other night? Or, I mean, I'm that did... weirdo. I will ask, I, I will text everybody that I know and say, did you hear no, that? No, good. No, did yeah. You hear yeah. That? So, I'm trying to just bring some awareness to them. Um, yeah. I did, I did have a, um, uh, I, told, <laughs> I told Johnny, I'm not going to call him a friend anymore. But the guy, the guy that owns the property on the opposite side of the clear cut area, uh -huh. I asked for permission because I didn't tell him what it tracks I was wanting to look for. Yeah. But I wanted to have permission. I mean, I don't have to necessarily ask for permission to go across the clear cut area or on my own property. That's right. But um, I wanted to know if if he would care if I would drive over and enter from his area and kind of do some scoping about through there. Yeah. And um, he was really nice. He sent me a text message and said, stay off my property. Have a good day. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, he's not on my friends list. Right? That's okay. He is not getting a Christmas card. This year. That's right. He will not. He will not. I may fly a drone over there. <laughs> so, so speaking of like you just mentioned, like tracks or anything like that, I mean, has anything have you have you had anything weird around your house i mean because obviously like in johnny's case i mean he has these things like visiting his backyard all the time well well full yes. moon yeah definitely on full moons yeah. i was telling johnny that right after seeing uh his video uh, <coughs> excuse me about the squirrels the dead squirrels old yeah. dead yeah. squirrels i've had two Oh. Um, and of course we had about four or five holiday rain where it rained. I mean, just crazy rain Yeah. right after that happened. Uh -huh. So by the time I was able to, uh, do a walk about even on my own property and go out to the spring heads, um, everything was just so washed out. You probably wouldn't have been able to have differentiated, uh, -huh. uh you know, you couldn't see anything really because it was just yeah. a washout. Um, but I do plan on doing it quite often and I'm going to do a, a gifting area. Okay. I think I'm going to do a gifting area. I haven't decided where the best area would be. Um, but I think it would be where all of the spring heads come together. And, uh, because there's like a little raised area that's okay. almost like a, an island. Okay. And so I think, uh, because there were some, uh, tree breaks there. Okay. And so I thought, well, maybe this would be a good area. So, now, I did take my machete out there and I cut down some bamboo that had started growing that wasn't there last year. Uh, so um, I cut that down and I hope that didn't, you know, disturb them if that was something that, you know, if they yeah. could sense that I had cut something down. I don't know. They, they can seem to put up with a whole lot, like the, the area that our main research area Okay. that we call the happy place. I yeah, mean, the happy place. They, we had a whole, a whole season of logging out there and cutting trails and everything else. And from mm -hmm. what me and Hank saw, they're still out there. So Are they good? I okay. don't think, I don't think stuff like that. Now, maybe like how they did the 900 acres behind you. I'm sure that had a big effect. Well, but it, I, is, it is waterfront on the, uh, on the reservoir. It would be on the, west side of the clear cut but on the east side of the reservoir if that makes sense so it it does meet the water there um yeah. at some point um so it may be something that they would still be able to access because there are still some trees uh through there used to be an old cotton gin back there okay and that area has kind of grown up but it's the actual i sent you some pictures of the actual Goshen Springs area where the truck is right. with the tree growing through the uh, thing. Yeah, so that whole area there was farmland at one point um, uh, on the back side of that, but where, where my woods and the clear cut meet is on the back side of that area that I sent you those photos of. So there, oh, here comes my buddy. I'm sorry. No, no. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, you're, you're out in a rural part there. Yeah. Um, any 
any type of um, close encounters around the house? I mean, like in your yard? I mean, you notice things moved or anything yes. like that? Yes. Oh, my oh. gosh. It's funny that you say that. And I don't even know if I told Johnny this. Um, I don't remember anything about that. Yeah, I, actually. And I blamed it on an owl or a hawk. Um, I had a water line break when we had negative seven degree temperatures for like three or four days in a row recently. Okay. And I had a water line break. So I, um, it was actually on Christmas Eve when it yeah. broke and I went uh, about a week without water because uh, it's Christmas. Uh -oh. Yeah. And trying to get someone out to fix it. So, um, I went and bought the wrong kind of pipes, but I went and bought some pipes <laughs> okay. and I had them. <sighs> Uh, laying in a triangle across the back deck and I just laid them there just so they would be there whenever I did get someone to come out and do some repairs and one morning this was actually this was actually I want to say it was the day before I got the recordings okay yeah I, I'll have to go back and see when the dates were on that but I'm pretty sure it was the day before I actually got the recordings and um, I was uh, getting ready to brush my teeth or something in the bathroom and I had my window open and I heard something. And so I came out of the bathroom and went to flip the light on onto the back porch and I couldn't see anything right away. But when I got ready to leave for work uh, 30, 45 minutes later, um, that's when I noticed that one of the pipes was standing up on the outside of the porch and the other one was pushed off. And so my hmm. first thought was that if a hawk or an owl or something flew down, maybe they had, you know, grabbed the pipes or done something that, that caused them to fall the way that they did. But hindsight yeah, that's pretty freaky. That was right there on the back porch. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if owls are going to be doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. that's just that. Yeah, that just sounds. Yeah, a sounds bit, a little suspicious. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 a little bit more more than what an owl would want to do. Man, I mean, yeah, so that's standing weird. up. So I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and make notes to remember what the time. No, was on that. definitely. Yeah, and so that's that's something we were gonna suggest to you. Obviously, is like document. I mean, yeah, get you like journal. even and like around my property. <clears throat> I mean, it just may be simple stuff like like working out in the yard and being around my property and stuff. I know where certain things belong, right. and I know like I have like bits of concrete block in a right, certain in area, area back behind my house. Well, when right. I find that piece of concrete block or a, a piece like it sitting on the side of my truck one morning, cause it's parked oh. next to the wood line. Yeah. I know my kids like, didn't do it and right. I know where it came from, but it's just little bitty things like that that happen over right. and over and over again. Okay. I'm going to be a little bit more aware now. And I, Actually, I have six trail cams. Oh. And wow. I, I know. But isn't it awful that the batteries run out on them at the same time? Uh, <laughs> because you have to replace you, them at the same time. Exactly. So, you got to stagger them. You got to yeah, like, yeah, uh, change them out. Do that? Yeah. So I'll just have three down and three working. So, but yeah. Yeah. The one I moved one around to the other side of the house because I was like, uh, you know, if something does approach the house, even, you know, my trail cam will send it to my phone too. So, um, and then not too long after I moved it, I got a notice that my battery was down and I needed to replace the batteries and I still haven't done that yet. So the one that's closest to the house, I have to change the batteries on, but that would be, yeah, I'm going to be pay more attention to that. You know what though? And there was something else that, that was weird that now that we're talking about weird stuff like that. <laughs> okay, I built a scarecrow for my garden, oh. but I used an old um, camera, an old school camera tripod. Okay. And so they're like really heavy. If I had to guess weight on it, I would say 25 pounds. Ooh. And yeah, and I weighted it down with a sandbag. Uh, I mean, yeah. a literal bag of play sand, yeah. which is, I think, 40 pounds. Okay. And I just used some of my old clothes. I just put a, uh, and I put a ball cap on it and I made 
a, a face out of a plastic bag and some uh, coconut core. And I put it just on the outside edge of my garden. And forever, ever, it's been standing there. It hasn't moved until recently. Uh. I went out. Well, when I opened my windows and my curtains in the morning, I could. It, I said, "Oh, if something happened to." I call her SpongeBob because she's ridiculously <laughs> ugly, and the shirt she has on is yellow. But I uh, or uh, SpongeBob SpongeBob Scare Pants is her name. <laughs> And so, but she had fallen over. Well, I just thought maybe the wind had gotten it. And I thought, how in the world did the wind drag a 40 pound bag of sand to knock this over? Yeah. So I put it all back together. Well, two days later, she's laying down again, but she wasn't where she normally was. She was literally five, 10 feet away from where she was. Oh. So mm. that's something else to take into account. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks, I, it looks like a person. Yeah, we don't, yeah. I don't want. We don't want to lead you into thinking that everything that happens is going to be Sasquatch. But I know, def, but... with that call, seeing as how it wasn't even the first call you heard, see, I right. didn't realize that. I didn't realize right. that there were two other times on your property that you heard this. Right. Yeah. Um, before I recorded it. Yeah. Definitely. That's yeah. why we do stuff like this. Is we want I. I honestly believe that the key to finding out a lot of the information we need to know is going to come from private property owners. And that's because right. we yep. know, you know, where stuff goes, you know, where stuff belongs, you know, where stuff, <laughs> stuff is moved, <laughs> able to notice like, little things that other people dog. wouldn't notice. No, that's right. okay. No, <sighs> but, but yes. yeah. yeah. So and definitely keep us posted on stuff like that. I will. I will definitely do that. But, you know, my back garden is uh, all the way to the edge of the woods okay. behind my house. So it's it's not right up against the house. But that is weird because I've had that there since February or March of last year. And it's never moved. So well, that is if something you get, to think of. If you kind of get a, uh, when you think about putting it back up again. Mm -hmm. If you can kind of do it strategically where there's like good dirt all around it. Yeah. Maybe really you'll get some it. footprints coming up to it. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. So, yeah. so Paula, real quick, you, 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 you talked about the possibility of doing a gifting site or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I know, Johnny, you've got a little spot back there behind your place, too. That yeah, I've never had any luck. It's some chicken eggs, right? You know? But, yeah. uh, oh, you put out some necklaces that that were missing. Yeah, that it was at the Happy Place. Happy Place, yeah. Uh, happy those, place. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but that, now they, that's they weird. Had been there for, they had been there for, what, a couple months? And there's no way to tell. The beginning what? of that was super weird because there's only one human object. Like these woods are super clean. Right. And there's only one man-made object in those woods at all. And it was a really old, old barrel, like a 55-gallon drum, old right. rusted out drum. And right next to it is this stump. <clears throat> and we had been out there walking around and stuff. And then we come walking back and then there's this perfect arrowhead. Like it just came off the the uh, the showroom floor, just laid right down on that that pile of sand. <laughs> so that's kind of we were like, yeah, man, that's super odd for it just to be sitting there like that. Plus, yeah. it was the only other human object out there, so maybe nice. I don't know. So that's why we left those necklaces. Now the necklaces were gone, and nothing else showed up. That's all we can really say. We don't yeah. know. Maybe it was a crow. Maybe it was a raccoon came and got them. We don't know what happened. All we know is they're gone. So, yeah, but still way cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we just got to keep track of it. Like I said, around here on my property, the only thing that's ever really gone missing is like eggs. But apparently they don't even like when I like leave the eggs out for them. They apparently like to take them take the eggs themselves. So yeah. <laughs> they're, uh, they're pretty picky around here, it seems like. <laughs> wow. Well, I ha I don't remember if it was you I asked or if it might be my friend Kimberly. Uh, I think they like peanut butter. 
So I thought about doing a peanut butter um, surprise type thing, but I don't want to do it to the degree where, you know, just any other possum or raccoon or whatever would take it. So I'm strategically trying to figure out where could I place it? Should I do it high or should I do it low? Um, you know, and what else, other things could I incorporate into it to kind of make it obvious to them that this is for you? I think, Johnny, you got some experience about that. And perhaps that's something you can share with Paula, yeah, whether offline, you know, if you need. Be. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'll go over a few things yeah. on what I did around here and what I've had happen. I've had. I've had one really good result, and then I've had some other things that you just don't ever know. The, the right. hardest part is keeping it to where even if something does disappear, you know, how do you know? How do you know? That's right. I've only had one incident where I was 100% confident, and that was because it was a brand new thing of peanut butter. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, the lid and the seal was left behind. But the peanut butter jar left. And this is like the day after I got growled at. And I left it in that same spot. That's the only time I've had like a 100% like I really, really, really feel like this was them. Other times yeah. it's been random where, it, yeah. you know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to, you got to kind of come up with a way to where it can't be taken by other animals. But still kind of get some confirmation at the same time. But yeah. we'll, we can try to come up with some things. The uh, only thing, and a lot of people will say, don't leave them food. Don't leave them food. Well, that comes from, there are several stories out there of people that, where these creatures were coming on their property and they were taking like lots of dog food or lots of horse uh, feed or stuff like that. And then yeah. they quit putting it out. And okay. then it, it made that it made these creatures angry. That's if you put something out and they get dependent on it, that's one thing. But if you're yeah. putting peanut butter out every couple of weeks or an apple or something, right? You know, these things are reported all the time. Some of the best physical evidence that I know of that's been collected and been in, uh, in uh, DNA studies have come from uh, dumpsters and garbage cans. Okay. So if they go through our landfills and dumpsters and garbage cans and all that i don't think peanut butter is going to kill them right you know every once in a while i don't think it should be a, a big deal i'll make sure it's a good healthy kind without sugars <laughs> that'd probably be a good idea because i don't <laughs> like that kind myself and i'll I'll, yeah. I'll save the jeff for me and they can have the healthy stuff <laughs> there you go well well paul you said you also have a garden you know yeah. so i mean there's potential food items from that i guess yeah you know? there would have been had we not had that freeze Pre yeah that's, that's true that's yeah true. got all my lettuce yeah. all my cabbage everything that i had in it brussels sprouts all of it well man, I, I, and i did have it covered with a cloth and everything too so just too I'll cold i'll tell you what this was definitely uh you know a pretty exciting um you know podcast this time around johnny i mean just uh i did not expect well, I'm excited. To, to hear what i heard <laughs> that's what's eerie you know because i'm thinking oh my god that's mississippi you know i went to school yeah. i think she's gonna have more i i mean i honestly think especially with hearing it several times yeah. you know the the weird activity you don't know until you usually what happens what i've seen what's happened around here what's happening with other people is something will happen to where they'll know that you know yeah. that they're there yeah once that happens then that's that's when the activity usually increases you may get a bunch of little things happen for a very long time with nothing real apparent right. but as soon as something happens to where they're like hey she knows we're here she knows we're that's here. that's usually when things ramp up so yeah so, you know, so, so paula that's what uh my next question is like you know our you know, you find yourself like, you know, maybe stepping out in your backyard woods a little more or or are you actually saying things like, hey, I know you're here or I'm just going to the shed or so like talking out loud. I whistle to them. Ah, I have whistled a few times. 
Okay. And, uh, and I, I try to do it at, I do it at the times in the morning when I'm leaving for work because it is still dark. Okay. And um, I've done it a few times around dusk when I'm actually walking through the woods. Um, and I do, I've always been very active walking through here Okay. Uh, since I've been back. So it's not something that they would think would be different or weird uh, because I do often walk you know, okay. all the way around the perimeter of my property. Wow. Um, How many acres do you have? It's a little over four and a half, right? Okay. Or right at four and a half. Okay. Well, yeah. so. well cool. And that's another thing that we need to, uh, uh, we need to try if you want to, is try to find uh, investigators in your area. Yeah. To come out there and walk the property with you. Yeah. And uh, we've got a, we've got a lot of, uh, Scott DeForest is one of our group members yeah. and he is in the BFRO and he's got a lot of contacts in the BFRO and we'll, we will work on trying to get somebody out there if you would like. Now it may okay. not be something yeah. you're interested in, but if I get to go too. Oh, oh yeah. Def yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I got to buy new boots. <laughs> oh. That's a great yeah. idea. That's a great idea, Johnny. No, yeah. yeah, we'll talk to Scott about it and try to get it hooked up. I know uh, I talked yeah. to uh, Matthew Delph um, <clears throat> briefly about it. I think he's got friends in Mississippi. I haven't heard back from him, but there's a couple options. I haven't brought it up to Scott yet, but I'm sure I guarantee either he knows someone or somebody he knows knows someone. So, Well, I, I had a friend that I work with, uh, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago now, Um came to my office i mean at 5 30 in the morning walked in and said hey did you have people here this weekend because i had told him about the you know uh hearing it and, and that kind of thing and uh he described a truck that and i've forgotten now i'll have to go back and look at my uh text message and stuff because i think i may have texted you i can't remember who it was that i was talking to about it but yeah you was, told me about it yeah it was a it was an actual huge truck that was decked out that he said was that he saw near his area which is Peelahatchee and uh Peelahatchee by the way uh, uh, crow flies is you know not more than a couple miles and um country roads it's probably seven or eight to get there from here uh -huh. but um he said they were heading back to the southwest and that would be near where I heard the scream the the angry scream in 2018 which is on the um the mapping project so if they were in the area they might have been looking for that particular spot i don't know but we have a lot of uh state forest and uh federal forest around this area yeah. and uh so it doesn't surprise me at all that they would <clears throat> excuse me that they would either be traveling through or you know or that they you know Maybe some of them actually live here, you know, oh, yeah. whether they live here or traveling through. I, it doesn't really matter much to me if, if, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really interested now at one point, you know, I used to scoff at my friend Kim and say, Oh, she's a little nuts. Oh yeah. <laughs> we all deal with that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now everybody says I'm a nut and I love it. So <laughs> whatever. Well, you know, once, once you experience these things or yeah. in Joe's case, you see them, there's, yeah. there's no going back. You can call me a nut yeah. if you want to. I know what exists. And, My uh, heart yeah. races just at the thought because if I were to see what I heard and recorded, I can't imagine what state of mind I would be in at that point. Unless I had already, you know, made friends with them, maybe I wouldn't be as afraid. But in my mind, I would be terrified. Well, hopefully it's one like me and Joe had and not one like Happy had where he got carried out by one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would faint. <laughs> Need the fainting count. But they were very gentle with him. They put him back in the front seat of his truck. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> with his gun. That was nice. So I, I just had I just had to look up Peelahatchee, um, Mississippi on the on my tablet, the map, you know, I know yeah. it, sound, it sounded familiar, you know, some, um, like I, I if said, I, if I get kicked off guys, my phone's very low. So oh, just, okay. if that happens, carry on. Yeah. Okay. No, so Paula, I mean, I just, you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your, oh, uh, you for having me. your incredible 
uh, recordings, um, your the, the stories, you know, and everything that you're doing around your your homestead there. Um, hopefully, like uh, Johnny can get with Scott with our group and and right. find, f- find some decent folks. Maybe come out there and 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 you show them around or something. Yeah. Um, but you know, definitely would love to have you back on again, Thank especially you. especially you know, like man, if you could continue getting these these recordings, that'll be phenomenal. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have a feeling she's gonna get more. Yeah, yeah me too. Yes. Like I said, I've already heard them a couple, and you know, it, I, I really would was not ex- I didn't play my recordings through a Bluetooth recorder. It was it was sitting on the porch, and you know how when your phone's in proximity, it's gonna pick yeah. up the Bluetooth. And so I was just actually just listening to the, I think it was one of the looped ones or something that uh, David and Chris had uh, done. Uh-huh. And, and when it came through the speaker, literally, I probably flashed my eyes a couple times blinking and I heard it. And then I was like, oh my goodness. So my thought was if, if, if they were that far away and they could hear what was coming through. Yeah that they must have exceptional hearing and and if that was something that would entice them to yell back or to respond to what they heard then um, maybe that would be something really cool to try again oh, yeah definitely. you know to, to search for them so. <clears throat> no but well, thank you cool stuff well, well we'll definitely work on uh yeah me and paula will work on trying to organize things a little better and hopefully we can get because i really want I really want to get them to <clears throat> to dig into that scream because that scream is, I mean, all of it's impressive. Yeah. But the scream, <laughs> scream is, is crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming on, Paula, and hopefully we can have you back on again if anything Absolutely. else happens. Yeah. Keep Thank in, you so Keep in touch. I will. Thank you so much. All righty. All Thank right, you we'll so much. We'll talk to you later on. All right. Tell, tell your son I said happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> bye 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 wow that was really good oh, those, yeah, rec- those recordings are unbelievable you don't expect that you know <laughs> no so they're uh and I, I knew that she had the the one earlier in 2018 but i thought it was the one that she heard in 2018 didn't get it recorded uh-huh. and then the original one which is like seven minutes i didn't realize that she had heard it two other times before on her property which is even better you know wow so yeah, uh, man uh, yeah it, it almost makes uh makes me wish we lived a little bit closer just because that sounds like a place to really start looking around hopefully scott can get someone out there so well she's got all those natural springs right there on her property too and that and they've you know with them knocking down you know 900 acres of forest and if yeah. she's got you know a woodlot. The way I would imagine yeah. it is, you know, there's kind of, she's got woodlawn, you know, yeah. running through her property and they're probably having to use her property now. So we'll see, see how it yeah. goes. All righty. All right, Johnny, man. Well, man, I think this was a good one. We'll have to, um, uh, get this thing up and put on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks buddy. Heck yeah, man. Well, y'all have a good, y'all have a good evening and tell your son, uh, happy I will. birthday. I will. Thank you. Thank you All so right, much. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.